Hi guys, welcome to this painting tutorial for Age of Sigmar Winter Sylvaneth. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can achieve uh, a very quick speed painting technique to create a dryad that looks sort of like this here. As you can see, it's pretty striking and stands out in the battlefield well. So, first thing you need to do is get your dryad. After priming it, you need to paint it with uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey from the Citadel paint range. I don't it over a white primer, you can do it over a black one, it's totally fine. The next step you're going to do is get some Citadel Rust Grey. And what you're going to do with this paint is you're going to dry brush it all over the model. For those who don't know, dry brushing is a really great technique for speed painting. You get paint, you put it on your brush, and then you get some tissue paper or uh, loo paper as I've got here. And you just really, really work it into the bristles, almost so the paint's not coming off at all. Then what you do is you rub it over the model, uh, focusing on uh, the raised edges. The paint will come off onto these raised edges and uh, create a very, very quick, very effective highlight. Uh, this doesn't look so immediate with the rust grey, but when you move on to the next colour, which is Uthen grey, uh, it really does start to stand out, so don't panic at this stage. Again, we're going to apply this with a dry brush. Uh, put it on your tissue paper, really rub your brush around, uh, get all the excess paint off, and then just start rubbing it back and forth across the model, uh, focusing on the raised edges. With this one, it does look a little bit stark at this stage. Uh, don't worry, the following steps uh, dull the model down a little bit, uh, because we're going to start to shade now with non oil. This is for the parts of the wood that are darker. If you look at the box art of dryads, you'll notice that uh, some patches of wood are darker than others. It's mainly around the groin area, where there seems to be this sort of uh, wooden loincloth. So I chose it and I hit it with a few coats of non oil. Now, to add to the speed uh, painting element of this, uh, I sort of cheat with a hair dryer, is that after I add this layer, I give it a quick, uh, maybe 10, 15 second blast, and it really dries in really quick so I can add two or three layers on top of each other, and that really darkens down that wood, uh, making a nice contrast. Then we're going to use some uh, red paint. I use my fist in red. This is to pick out the leaves. So this is the part where you have to have the most care. So choose a smaller brush, and just start picking on the leaves, which are mostly sort of around the uh, back branches of Sylvanus models, but there are some uh, along the body. Again, for this part, it's going to be the longest part possibly because you really have to take your time uh, because any kind of splodges of red uh, on the branches where they shouldn't be are going to stand out. So just really take your time. Also get a smaller brush if you wish and at this point dot in the eyes. And for some reason on this model I also painted the tongue, which I haven't done before. You don't have to do it, it's just an option. Uh, and it doesn't really take away much from it, so there you go. Now we're going to move on to the base, we're going to use some astrogranite debris from Games Workshop. Uh, again, get it on a spatula or a tool or something and just start moving it around the base. Uh, for me, this army comes from the realm of death, so it lives in uh, sort of a blasted uh, landscape, so this is perfect for that. But you can choose whatever basing scheme you want. And as you can see, I'm still getting used to filming tutorials, so excuse my thumbs. But basically, just work that around the base. Don't worry if you get it around the feet. Uh, models moving across the battlefield are going to get a little bit dirty. So Now we're going to move on to uh, shading the base. So let that dry. Again, you can sheet with a hair dryer. Uh, again, a 30 second blast will really, really, really dry that in. Then you're going to get some Drakenhof Night Shade from the Games Workshop range as well. Uh, you're going to get it on a shade brush or equivalent and just start to work that in to the base. Drakenhof Nightshade works a lot better than Nolan Oil in my opinion because it adds sort of a blue uh, arcane feel to the model uh, and it stands out a little bit better. Once that's dry, again you can use a hair dryer to dry it in. Hair dryers are great. <laughs> you're going to use some uh, long beard grey which is a Citadel dry paint, and you're going to use this to do the final highlight to the base and to the model itself. Again, you're going to dry brush this, so wipe it in tissue paper, toilet paper, get the excess off, and then start dragging it across the base. You can see immediately that this creates this nice sort of uh, light, uh, almost dusting of snow, which is perfect for our winter scheme. Uh, and at this point too, you can focus it in around the face, and in particular the claws as well, uh, to make them just look that little bit more sinister, and a little bit more sharp. Now we get to the fun part, where we use our texture paint, 
which is again from Citadel and is Valhalla and Blizzard. So pick up a tool or a spatula, something really simple. Uh, get some of that Valhalla and Blizzard on the end of it, and then just pick random spots on your base and start to just put them out there. Snow falls in random areas, as we know. <laughs> and then what you're going to do is you're going to get some more on your base and you're going to start adding it to random patches to the model. This creates a sort of unified feel and it really brings out the winter element. In my head, these trees lay dormant until something comes into their forest lands. Uh, so the snow is going to fall on top of them, it's going to rest in crags and nooks all around their body. Uh, and it just sort of adds a, an element to the model, which in my opinion works. So yeah, pretty good. Your imagination can run wild here, wherever you want to put the Valhalla Blizzard. You can whack it on any sort of shoulders and things. Uh, around the head in particular is perfect. So once you're doing that, you're going to move on to getting some of this uh, scatter leaves. This is Javis, Jarvis, I can never pronounce it right. Uh, you can pick this uh, autumn leaf set up on eBay for around about uh, three or four pounds uh, if you came on it. Then just get some PVA glue or white glue and pick random splodges along the model and then some random splodges on the base as well. Anywhere at all. Try to avoid uh, putting it under the knee or places like that because this is where you have to kind of think logically about gravity. Uh, a leaf wouldn't be stuck under the knee of something, gravity would probably pull it down. So just kind of aim all these splodges in areas of natural gravity. Lovely. Once you've done that, just gather up a finger and thumbful of those leaves and just scatter them all over the model, uh, making sure you're getting them on the splodges. Uh, you don't have to press them in with anything, you can if you want. Uh, this is all about speed painting, so really don't have time. Just give them a good uh, dusting with those leaves. And when you're finished, you can tap the model off. And there you go. Starting to look pretty good. Then the last thing I did with this model was just give the base a matte black from the Army Painter range. Uh, coating to tie it in and just to make it look that a little bit more finished. So as you can see this model is pretty striking. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of the squad or the unit that I'm painting up. Uh, very quick, very effective. Took maybe 40 minutes to do it. You can add some more details to character models such as this branch witch that I have here. Again, just take your time. So I hope you like and enjoy it. Hit subscribe uh, and like for more videos. Thanks guys and take care.